word. 2 Timothy chapter number 3. I'm going to read something very familiar uh, to us tonight, and, but I'm going to look at it a whole different way um, than, than what I know I've kind of looked at it before. And, but I hope it will be a help to us tonight. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter number 3, and we're going to start reading in verse number 1. The Bible says, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. From such turn away. For of this sort are they which creep into houses and led captive silly women laden with sins, led away with divers' lust, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Our gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we do thank you again for this day. Lord, we are thankful to be able to stand and, and just uh, preach your word tonight. Lord, we're thankful for your word. Lord, we're thankful for you for uh, uh, passing it down throughout many generations before us. Lord, that we can come and open it up tonight, Lord, and it can just give us hope. Lord, that it can just give us uh, instruction, that it can, we can just, uh, uh, just dive into your word, Lord, at times in our life, and it can just help us uh, get through some of those tough times. Lord, we are thankful for uh, the good news that Sister Crystal shared that she had today. Lord, that's a blessing. We just ask you just continue to work in that situation. Lord, just let your will be done. Lord, ask you just help us tonight, Lord, what you've laid upon my heart. Lord, help me give it to your people here tonight the way you gave it to me, that it can be a strength and encouragement and a help to each and every one of us, Lord, that each and every one of us can walk out of here tonight uh, closer to you than we was when we came in. And you ask you just help and meet with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm not going to take the time. Uh, we, we've heard this passage preached so many times in many different ways. So I'm not going to take the time to uh, go through all those things and what all those things mean. We have a pretty good understanding uh, of what they all mean. We have a pretty good understanding of uh, these are the times that we are living in. Uh, we have a pretty good understanding that we know that we're in the last days. Uh, we know the Bible says we've heard it taught, we've heard it preached, uh, that nothing else has to happen for the Lord to return. Uh, we know where we're at. But in looking at these things and thinking about these things, and, and don't get me confused, God's not going to send us a sign. We're not laying anything outside, and we know we're not going to leave a cloth outside and have dew on it in the morning. We're, we're not talking about signs like that. But we can look at these things and see all the signs of the times that we are in. And that got me going down this road and thinking of signs that we see. Have you ever given a thought to how many signs you see on a daily basis? Just how many signs you come across on a daily basis? When I started working on this weeks ago, and then a couple weeks ago, I, I was trying to figure out, uh, you know, I'm not sure which one's closer. It's pretty close, Brother Adrian or, or the Sheckenbergers, which one might be closest to the church. But as I was coming back from jail, I started counting. If you don't know where Brother Adrian lives, it's literally just right, just like almost right there. From Brother Adrian and Sister Nancy's house to here, I passed over 50 signs. Over 50 signs just in that short stretch. And we obviously, you, you see street signs. You know, we have yield and the speed limit and, and stop signs and all those kinds of things. Uh, we, we, we have yard signs. You'd see all kinds of yard signs advertising for houses down your all's way and, and yard signs advertising for certain politicians or yard signs talking about a yard sale or whatever might have welcoming signs if you was driving and look over you might see a welcome sign on somebody's porch welcome you to their house until you go try to pass out a track or something brother right then it might not be so welcome amen but you you see all kinds of things you have keep you know signs that might be posted telling you to keep out no trespassing all those kinds of things so we see lots of signs and that's just that short area so it's hard telling how many thousands of signs we would come across on a daily basis. What does that lead us to do too often? Ignore them. We pay no attention to them, Brother Brian. We, we, we don't give them a second thought. I don't know how many mornings when I go to work, I'll typically leave my house about 5.30. I don't know how many days I will pull out of my driveway and at the end of the street you see somebody almost at least twice a week, probably more than that, 
you see somebody just barrel straight through the stop sign at the end of my road. Most of the time, Brother Ray, because there's that flesh part of me, Christian, that's not saved, and I just gun it, get to the end, pull right out on the road, and as bright as my lights will go. And the weird thing is, a lot of them, Miss Lisa, she's, she's laughing at me, a lot of them then they get on the interstate and they're running 65 on the interstate. And I'm like, well, what was you in such a hurry for? You was in such a hurry to get on the interstate and run below the speed limit. Like, I don't understand. But they just flat ignore that stop sign, just run right through it. How many times do we see a, a light turn yellow? How many of us yield? Or how many of us gun it to make sure we try to make it through there before it gets red? We just ignore them. How many times have you ever walked into Walmart or you walked into a store or you've walked in someplace and you see that caution, what floor sign, and you don't give it a second thought? Well, I don't see anybody here mopping, so I'm sure it's good. Just hoping that you're not going to fall and slip and break a neck or something like that. See, we see them so many times we just get to where we ignore them. I'm afraid that's what's happened with the stuff that goes on here. Is that the things that are going on in this world and we know the Lord's coming back we believe he's coming back and we just ignore all the things that are going on because do we really believe that it could be today do we really believe that it could be tonight and what I want to preach on with the Lord's help is just ignoring the signs just ignoring the signs we see everything that's taking place we see everything that's going on in our world that we know without a shadow of a doubt that the Lord could come back anytime and we just seem to ignore that. Can I say the first thing we have is we have the discouragement of ignoring. What do you mean the discouragement of ignoring? Do we understand that these things we know are taking place? These things we know are going to happen. So then why do we walk around with the pooch mouth all the time? Why do we walk around like we're defeated all the time? Why do we walk around and as soon as we see that, uh, that the fellow in the White House has declared some other stupid day or he's done others come other stupid thing, why do we let it affect us so much? We know these things are coming. God's still in control. God still, nothing happened today. We've heard this said many times. Nothing happened today that caught God by surprise. Nothing happened in your life. Nothing happened in mine. Nothing that happened in the White House. Nowhere did anything happen today that caught God by surprise. So why then do we begin to look and we see what's going on and we, we ignore these things and it allows us to become discouraged? Get discouraged. We get the pooch mouth. We just get so bummed out. Oh, man, look at everything going on in this world. I didn't want nothing to do with God. Well, the Bible said that, that there are going to be lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. Hello? We know that's coming. Why does it bother us so much? Why do we allow it to get us down so much? We can come into church on a Sunday. We can hear our pastor preach a message on Sunday morning. We, we can just we could shout the rooftop out. We can get so close to God. And by Monday, halfway to work, we just, man, if God just take us out of here, that'd be great. It, it, life is so terrible. Why? Because we have the discouragement of ignoring. The Bible tells us these things are going to take place. Can I tell you, by, by all accounts, there's a good chance things are going to get worse. So you have a choice. You can either allow it to continue to ruin your day, or you can say, you know what, things might get worse, but I know my God's still in control. And I've still read the back of the book. I still know that in the end, I win. So therefore, we don't have to walk around like you are. We don't have to walk around all discouraged. We don't have to walk around all defeated all the time because we're on the winning side. We should start living that way. We should start acting that way a little bit. The discouragement of ignoring. Can I say this? Not only do we have this discouragement of ignoring, we have the decision to ignore. What do you mean the decision to ignore? We just decide to ignore it. Well, I mean, there, there's no other way to look at it. There's no other way to look at it besides the fact that we make that decision to ignore what's going on in our world. Yeah. Think about what I just talked about a little bit ago, talking about those stop signs. How many of you have those stop signs in your neighborhood or you have those stop signs somewhere and you do that exact same thing? You might not barrel through them like I talk about people doing, but we don't stop, Brother Clint. We just pull up, make that little... We, we've already got in our mind as we're pulling up, we're looking. Well, I don't see Brother Christian sitting anywhere and I don't see anybody else coming, so I'm just going to kind of just, you know, halfway stop. We'll slow down a little bit and then we're going to go. We made the decision to ignore that. Can I say, when we don't live the life that we're supposed to, we're making the decision that we're going to ignore these signs. We're making the decision that we're going to live our life however we want to, and we don't give a second thought to the fact that God might come back at any point in time. If God comes back at 3 o'clock tomorrow afternoon, what's he going to find you doing? 
I mean, just picked a random time. I don't know. But, you know, maybe you'll be at work. Maybe you'll be on your way home. I have no idea. But what would he find you doing at a random time? What if he came back on a Friday night at 11 o'clock? What are he going to find you doing? Amen. See, we make a decision to ignore these things too many times. We make a decision that, you know what, I, I believe the word of God, but I'm just, I just don't believe maybe it's going to happen right now. We're going to get to even that even in depth a little bit more here later on. Can I say, not only do we see the discouragement of ignoring, the decision to ignore, but we also see the danger of ignoring. Think about the storms that we talked about yesterday. Now, you might not have done any kind of, you might have thought, hey, if it storms, it storms. You might not have done any preparation. This is the most preparation I did yesterday, Brother Adrian. I went home, I made fajitas on the grill outside, and when I covered my grill back over, I buckled the sides of it. Just in case it got windy, it didn't blow up. That was the most preparation I put into it. But think about years ago. Some of you here that are old enough to remember that Hurricane Katrina that came through, I think it was New Orleans. Think of the warning that they gave those people, Brother uh, Ron, to get out. And it's one thing I never understood. And I don't know ins and outs of everything, but so many people attack President Bush for what he did down there. I'm like, they told you to get out. You chose to stay. Right. Like, they told you what was going to happen. This hurricane's going to hit. It's going to destroy your city. You need to get out. And people chose to stay, and then we want to blame it on the government that they didn't get to them fast enough, and these people died. Like, hello, we gave you a warning. But they chose to ignore it. They, they chose to stay in that danger zone down there. The danger of ignoring these things is that, are we ready? What if God did come back at 3 o'clock tomorrow? Are you ready? Are you going to hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant? You know, I heard something I thought was interesting this week. You know what we're not going to hear? Well done, thou good and talented person. Well done, thou good and giving person. Well done, thou good and working person. None of those things, some of the, those things are important. But he says, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Well, he finds you faithful. See, the danger in ignoring is that if we continue to ignore these things, continue to uh, uh, just push back of how real the fact it is that God can come back at any time, he's going to find us not ready. When he comes back, we're not going to be ready to meet him. We're not where we need to be. We're not, in, in, you know, in, in, I don't want to say necessarily in love with God, but we're just not in where we need to be in our life. That's the danger of ignoring. You see, like, like I said earlier, we didn't have it really bad here, so to speak. Now, the storms didn't get really bad here, but a lot of places they did. You know, a lot of places they did. My sister said, a video this morning. I don't know where it was from. This fellow sat in a, had a, with the news channel talking about that everything that he worked his whole life for, gone. Just like that. Just like that. See, when you know, the danger, you know, <laughs> Miss Tina was making fun of us yesterday, but the danger of being stupid like that. You get a tornado warning, the first thing you do is walk outside because you want to see what's going on, you know? And I told him last night, I said, when you've been hit by a tornado as often as she has growing up and her family, you know, you look at things differently than what I do, you know? And so, but that danger, and you walk outside and you see the video, I don't know if any of you seen the video of that girl down at UK trying to go to class on Monday, or what was yesterday, Tuesday morning, and it blew her over. You know, that's the danger in ignoring what's going on. Thought it was so important she just had to get to class and it literally blew her over. Blew her backwards and blew her over and scuffed up her arm. I've seen a picture of her later on. The danger of ignoring. When we choose to ignore the things of God, choose to ignore what's going on, he's going to come back and find us not ready. He's going to come back and find us. We've not led our family. We've not led our loved ones. We've not led our coworkers and those things to the Lord, the, the opportunities that we had, which we'll get to that in just a little bit, because we're just not ready. The danger of ignoring. The fact that do we truly, if we truly understood that he could come back at any time, like truly put that into practice and understood that, we would realize the danger in just not caring about tonight. We're going to get to all that in just a second. Can I say this fourthly? The doom of ignoring. When we choose to ignore how real it is, how many friends, family, co-workers, whoever else you want to say, church members, how many people around you are going to wake up in hell because you chose to ignore how real this is? Amen. How many of those around you could you have an opportunity to talk to 
that'll wake up in hell because you chose to ignore just how real this is. We say that all these things are happening. That's what it tells us, that in the last days, perilous times shall come. And we see all these things taking place, and we just go through our day like it's no big deal. We just go through our day. Hey, I'm saved. I'm looking forward to going to heaven. I know what God's done for me. I can't wait to go to heaven. And I just hope he comes back before the next election in case goofball gets voted back in or whatever it may be. And we don't give it a second thought. All the while, there's some that are waiting on us to share the gospel with them. There are some that we might have even shared the gospel with them before, but God might open a new door the next time around, and we're going to choose not to, and that the doom is the fact they're going to wake up and spend eternity in hell. Can I say the devil is pulling out all the stops to make sure that he can get everyone in hell with him that he can? Can I say, it, it's absolutely, Brother Phil, we talked about it last night in the Bible Institute. devil knows he's going there, and he wants to take as many people with him as he can. And so if he can cause you to ignore these things or cause you to think, hey, you've got plenty of time, don't tell, you don't have to tell your family today. Don't ruin family dinner today. Tell them tomorrow. They might not have tomorrow. They have no idea what we may have. The doom in ignoring. Can I say this as far as the last thing as far as ignoring? The definitive of the fact that we are. Being definitive in the fact that we are ignoring these things. You might say, come on, Brother Josh, this is a Wednesday night crowd. We, we don't ignore these things. It might be the Wednesday night crowd. Let me ask you something. When, when you pull up, since we've talked so much about it and, and, and we've discussed it, you know, go back to that whole stop sign. When you pull up to that stop sign and you're approaching it, you know you're supposed to stop. But you make that decision you're going to roll through. Now, if Brother Christian or somebody else sees you and they pull up behind you and they say, you just ran that stop sign, you don't get to say, no, I didn't. I stopped. No, I, I watched you. I actually have you on dash cam rolling through that. It's definitive that you did that. If he catches you running 75 down, I had somebody this morning. I don't know why this came out all of a sudden. I was coming over here this morning driving down uh, Pleasant Valley, uh, 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 Brother Brian, and this car come up behind me about to run me over. And I'm running 55. I, mean, I thought they was going to run me over. So, Miss Lisa, you can laugh at me again. There was a van about to pass me, so I just sped up and stayed right there behind that van. Just blocked him in right there. He had to follow us all the way down through here until the van finally got over. Then the guy, I bet he, I don't know how fast he's running. But when you make that decision, if you get busted, there is no getting out of it. There's a definitive art. You are doing that. The definitive of the fact that we are ignoring these things. Why would you say that? Now, this is going to be harsh. going to be mean. How many of you had the opportunity? I'm not talking about if you was at work. You just, you, you couldn't. You had kids get ready. You could do it. How many had the opportunity to be here early today for prayer, but you wasn't? It was just more important to do whatever. How many of you have the opportunity to maybe be here early for prayer anytime, but you choose not to? How many of you have the opportunity to maybe study or read more, but you just choose not to? How many of us have the opportunity to be able to come out on Monday night? Or even if we can't come out on Monday night, we've heard the pastor mention it many times. Hey, I can't go Monday night, but can we do this morning? Or can we do this other night? How many of you have the option to be able to do that, but you choose not to? Because the definitiveness of the fact that you're choosing to ignore these things. You're choosing to ignore them and think, I have time. This isn't that important. I got plenty of time. No, you don't have time. When you can sit around and sit at home or sit wherever it may be and choose not to do the things God tells us to do, there's no getting around the fact that we're not doing what God wants us to do. There's no getting around the fact that we're choosing to ignore what the Word of God says. As our pastor talked about last Wednesday, we're choosing to flee Jesus, so to speak. We're choosing to just run away from the things of God. We're choosing to say, you know what, I believe all those things are the case, but I'm going to heaven, that's all that matters. Is it really? Is it really? You know, I think of I think it was Brother Stacy Piercy that came and sang that song talking about his friend in hell. Why didn't you tell me? How many people do we have the opportunity to tell that we don't? Why? Because of the definitiveness of the fact that we are ignoring these things. What can we do differently? What can we do 
differently if, if we know that we, we have these things that we're ignoring. We have these things of the Word of God that we're ignoring. We're ignoring the, how close we truly are. You know, I don't know if it still happened or not, but if you remember last year, our pastor was talking about before they uh, rebuild a temple and talking about the sacrifice of the red heifers. I don't know if it still happened, but I believe somewhere around Easter or this week or last week or something, that was all supposed to take place. And that was part of the reason why Hamas or, Hamas or whatever it was was so much against Israel. These things are becoming real that the Bible talks about. But we just choose to go on about our day. Oh, well, God will come back when he comes back. Really? Is that the attitude he's going to find when he comes back? Is the fact you're just like, eh, I'm just going through my day. What can we do differently? Well, first, we need to live a life that shows that we believe these things. Amen. We need to live a life that truly shows we believe these things. I'm not, you know... It amazes me, church, we have church, Brother Josh, every Sunday, every Wednesday, you know, unless it's just snows afoot or we got a bunch of ice or something like that, but it still seems a struggle sometimes to come. I, I just don't get it. I don't understand. Not trying to me, not trying to pick on you, just, you know, why, why is it sometimes it's, it, I understand sometimes it's, sometimes you got to work, sometimes the kids are just going crazy and they're not cooperating, I get that. I used to have those things too. But sometimes it's just because it's not that important to us, Brother Tommy. We just, yeah, yeah church is tonight, but we don't have to be there till 7. It, we'll, we'll get there in time. Church is tonight, we don't have to be there till 7. Brother Josh is preaching, it'll be short. We'll just, let, 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 you know, it, it'll be okay. Is that living a life that shows that we believe these things? Is that living a life that shows how limited our time may be? Is that living a life that truly believes that Jesus could come back like that? That he shows up at 7.05 and... and you know, we're, we're still sitting at home because, oh, that caught me off guard. Live a life that shows that we believe these things. Live a life and just trust him. Just trust him. Just trust that he knows what's going to happen. He knows where everything's at. And just living a life that shows, you know what, I'm just going to trust God that this is what he wants me to do and I'm going to do it and that he's going to have control of everything. Trusting him when we tell others. Trusting him when we go about and we tell others and, and want to tell somebody else about Christ, trusting that if God opens that door, that we need to walk through it. That was actually going to be the next thing, but I've already got to it. Trusting God that if God opens the door for us to talk to somebody, take it. You know, it amazes me at, at my, where I work at. It, it amazed me the times that when I first started working there, nobody ever talked about going to church. And then after a little while, you, you slowly, the more you talk about things, the more you realize that some people might go to a church that, you know, go to a Catholic church or go to this or go to that. But then over time, slowly how people begin to ask questions, Miss Lisa. You're just sitting there and they're like, hey, don't the Bible talk about this? Don't the Bible talk about that? You know, when they ask, when everybody would ask me after, you know, we finally kind of came out there about me going uh, part-time and, and a lot of people would ask, well, what are you going to do? Are you just going to chill? No, I'm not just going to chill. <laughs> It's not what this is about. I'm, I'm too young to just chill. And I tell everybody, no, my goal is to, to work around the church, do stuff around the church. And somebody yesterday told me, he goes, well, I hope the storms don't get bad and you're not working around church picking up limbs and stuff like that. Like, well, that's not what this is about. Like, if absolutely something goes through and we've got to clean up limbs, we've got to clean up, we'll, we'll do that. I said, this is about studying, getting closer to God, doing what God wants us to do for all of us. You know, it's not about just blowing through and, and, and just you know, not doing what God wants us to do. Living a life to tell others, trusting him that when he opens that opportunity for us, that we go through that door. It is amazing you look at the world today and the world is searching for, there is so much craziness out there. The people are looking for something. And it might just take, you know, just a, a, a you know, whatever you want to say, kind of crazy comment that might open the door for you. Say, well, let me tell you what God says about that. Or, let me tell you what God's done for me. Let me tell you how God's blessed me. Let me tell you what God has done in our church. Let me tell you what God's done in my church. You know, the, today, as a matter of fact, we're sitting here today. Bella had uh, got hearing aids probably, I don't know, a year, year and a half ago, and she will not wear them. When we first put them in, she was always scared they was going to fall out, and she would say that she was going to play in gym at school, and they'd fall out, so she put them in. And we went a little over a month ago and had molds made. So we went back today and got molds made so fit in there better if you ask her she says yep they feel great they feel wonderful and guess what they're home on the charger brother tommy she still don't have them in and but we're sitting there today and, and the guy comes in and he's sitting there talking and he he walks in the other room and I, i'm talking to bella and he, he was doing a hearing test and it was over and he goes in this other room and i don't know we was talking about something 
And he come back in and he said, I got to adjust this and adjust this and, and do all these things. And, and then he goes back in the other room. Never said a word, Brother Ron, about what we were talking about. So I didn't even think he could hear us. I, I didn't know. And so he goes back in the room again. And, and he goes back over and I told Bella, I said, I said, you need to tonight, I said, when we get home this afternoon, I said, you give me your Bible. If you don't know, Bella will text me every time when Brother Doug or whoever's preaching says where to turn to, she texts me, where am I supposed to go? And, and so I'll usually text her back and she'll try to find it in her Bible since she's got a Bible. I said, when we get home, give me your Bible. I'll turn to where I'm going to be preaching from and, and you'll have it and you'll be ready to go. So he comes back in. He's like, so are you a preacher? He's like, I heard you talking. I was like, well, yeah, I am. He goes, where are you at church at? I said, Manual Baptist Church over at the end of Pleasant Valley. I said, now it's old Pleasant Valley. was Pleasant Valley. I said, you know, and, and, just, and you just have a conversation all of a sudden, invite somebody to come. You wasn't expecting, you know. Take advantage of those opportunities. Live the life because that might be, you know, I, I, you know he didn't go into detail then anything about it. But that might be the only thing he gets. A lot of people I work with, you know, I'm pretty sure that none of them go to church anywhere. There was a couple that talked about going to Easter services. The only time I've ever heard them talk about going to church. Use being time aware and taking those opportunities. Being aware when you're around somebody, when you, when you come in contact with somebody, of being aware of opportunities that God grants you to be able to share the gospel with somebody or just invite them to church or just have those conversations. Remember, we, we, we have, you know, I don't know why this popped into my mind. I'm pretty sure that last I checked, the, the school that Miss Brittany teaches in is still a public school. That we're supposed to not be able to talk anything about God or religion or anything like that. But yet she has kids that are, she teaches in school coming to church with her. So they're having that conversation. If God will present us, if we're just time aware and realize that when the door opens, if we use it and share those things, we have no idea what might happen. We have no idea the lives that we could see come to church and get changed. We have no idea the lives that we could see come and, and walk and get saved and see God do something great in their life. We have no clue what could take place. But instead, we just sit by and we ignore we hear somebody talk about bring up something about church or bring up some Catholicism or bring up something about the world. And instead of using that as an opportunity, let, let me tell you what the Bible says about that. Let me tell you what the Bible, yes, absolutely, things are terrible. Let me tell you what the Bible says about these end times. Instead, just continue to sit around and ignore. We just continue to sit around and just live our life the way we want to because, hey, I'm going to heaven. That's all that matters. I know where I'm headed. I know, I know who I'm taking with me. I mean, you know, I, I have all the people I'm taking with me that I want anyway. The rest of you I don't like. You know, hopefully don't want to have that attitude, but it sure seems that way. It sure seems that way when we're not willing to step out and do things God would have us to do. Can I say we have a wonderful, awesome, awesome church that so much gets done by so many. There's still more we could do. There's still more we could do. When was the last time you just went and, and you know, I, I don't know, I'm not suggesting you go drive around and waste gas. Gas has gone back up. But when was the last time you just asked God, God, what is it you want us to do for the building program? You want to give us land somewhere? Do I just need to go to church and pray? Do we just need to add on here? God, just help give our pastor discernment. God, just help him give him peace about what we need to do. When was the last time you prayed about just, God, what is it you want me to do in church? Maybe I need to come over and aggravate Brother Ray and help him mow. Maybe I need to, you know, whatever it may be. But instead, we just choose to ignore. We just choose to just go about, live our day, have, live our life however we want to, and ignore everything that's going on around us. All these things that are going on around us tell us exactly how close we are to the end. Are we taking anybody with us? Are we putting forth any efforts to take anybody with us? And if he comes back tomorrow, what condition, he's gonna, what condition is he going to find you in? You know, it was brought up last night about Enoch talking about Enoch walked with God and was not. Now, I don't know that that could or could not happen today. God can do whatever he wants to do. Are you walking close enough to God that he could just take you out of here? Are you walking close enough to God as Enoch was that God said, you know what, just, just come on, you just come up here with me. You don't need to mess with that junk down there anymore. You just come on up here with me. Or do we have to go to God anytime somebody asks us to pray and we got to ask and him for forgiveness and we got to get right before we could ever think about praying for somebody else? Are we ignoring 
what's going on because we're safe. We know what's going on. That's all I'm worried about. Or do we truly realize the seriousness of the situation and trying to reach others for Christ? Brother Clinton, you and Brother Daniel come and get a song of invitation. I'll ask all of you to stand and invite you to come. How much thought do we truly give to the fact that our very next breath we take could be the last one? Not for something bad happening here on this world, but the fact that Jesus could return and call us out of here just like that. While they're picking out a song, let us pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we do thank you again for this day. Lord, help us, Lord, not only as a church, but just individually. Realize that, Lord, we talk about all the signs that we come into contact with every day, but all the people that we come into contact with every day. Lord, from driving through drive throughs or going to the grocery store at work or whatever it may be, Lord, all the people that we have an opportunity to impact their life in some way each and every day, Lord, help us and ask us how much we're ignoring those people, ignoring those opportunities that you may give us, Lord, to be able to have an impact on their lives. I ask you to speak to hearts during this invitation. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Thanks to listeners like you, IBC has had over 100,000 views on our YouTube channel. If you haven't already, subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.